There's thing because I grabbed some for myself. Go for it. Good day, everyone. March the 28th, Government Operations Committee will come to order, please. Clerk, please take the roll. Representatives Bird, Calfee, Camper, Cochran, Dixie, Faison, Johnson, Lafferty, <clears throat> Lamberth, Littleton, Here. Marsh, Stewart, Here. Warner, Here. Vice Chairman Reedy, Here. Chairman Reagan, Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Do we have any personal orders? Seeing none, we will begin our calendar. First on the agenda is House Bill 2801. Motion. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Representative, pardon me, Chairman Cheryl, you are recognized to explain. First off, uh, I'm showing you have a, an amendment traveling with a bill, drafting code of 14228. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. All right. We don't need to do anything with that in this committee. You are clear to begin your explanation, sir. Thank you, Chairman and members. Uh, this bill, uh, the amendments makes the correction to the sunset date and the updates, the new name for the advisory board. The legislation will amend outdated language within the existing statute related to the vocational rehabilitation services the department provides. Specifically, the phrase rehabilitation centers is replaced with the community-based vocational rehabilitation services to ensure that the statute language lines with the current delivery method utilized by the department's vocational rehabilitation program. Members, you've heard an explanation. Uh, Representative Stewart, you're recognized. I, I think this is clear from the explanation, but, sir, it sounds like there's no intent, no legislative intent to reduce any services provided to anybody under this bill. Sponsor, you're recognized. Yes, sir, you're correct. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Any further questions? Seeing none, we are voting on sending House Bill 2801 to calendar and rules. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Bill moves out to calendar and rules. Thank you, Mr. Sponsor. Thank you, Chairman and members. Next on the list is House Bill 2030 by Chairman Kiesling. Motion. We have a motion and a second. Chairman Kiesling, I am showing an amendment traveling with your bill. Drafting code 15753. Is that correct, sir? That, that's absolutely correct, sir. This The amendment already on the bill. No action required in this committee. Uh, therefore, sir, you're clear to begin explanation of your bill. Sure, absolutely. The uh, Currently, the TWRA receives 0.53, just over that, of the fuel assessment off the pumps located across and at our Tennessee marinas. The uh, This amendment will just simply change that percentage to 0.88 to reflect the growth that's had, that, that actually has occurred since 2017. Now, I might add, members, that, again, let me stress that that, that this difference in percentages, all this goes to the infrastructure at our marinas and and, and the uh, resorts along our, and our docks along the, uh, across the state. So with that, I'll entertain any questions, Mr. Chairman. Members, you've heard an explanation of the bill. Do we have any questions of the sponsor? Chairman Lafferty, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think I heard you right. Just want to double check. This is a tax. This is for the fuel sold at yes. the marinas. Yes, I'm sorry. Sold and, down and here off the interstate. I think I failed to say that, Representative Lafferty, or Chairman Lafferty. Yeah, that, that's the, from the pump, from mm -hmm. the sale pumps at the at the marinas, yes. Follow-up, sir? Uh, thank you. And and intended to help maintain state-owned marinas, state-owned um, hotels, state-owned those those sorts of services. Well, again, this is a, that fund the the funds that the TWR that this is going into their their fund, and then they redistribute redistribute okay. those funds. Yes, thank you. That yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Chairman. 
we have any further questions of our sponsor? Seeing none, we are voting on sending. Oh, wait a minute. Do you have a question, sir? Do you have a question? Seeing none, we are voting on sending House Bill 2030 to finance ways and means. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Bill moves out to finance ways and means. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You, Mr. Sponsor. Chairman. And if I may, if, if you would allow me to take just a moment, just a half a minute of personal privilege, um, I would, would request that we all continue to keep, those of you who may not be aware, um, Chairman Wendell's father passed away over the weekend. And let's, let's uh, just, let's please keep him in your thoughts and prayers. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, we certainly will. Committee members, next on our agenda, item number three, House Bill 2849 by Chairman Kumar. Motion. We have a motion and second. We have a motion and a second. Chairman Kumar, I am showing a, an amendment traveling with your bill, drafting code 13746. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. That is correct, Mr. It, Chairman. Since it is already on the bill, no action required in this committee. You are cleared for explanation of your bill, sir. Thank you. Um, Amended uh, House Bill 2849 allows, <clears throat> excuse me, the Board of Medical Examiners to issue short term practice licenses to uh, physicians from foreign countries who are here for short term uh, learning and training. This license does not exceed 90 days. And before qualification, it is confirmed that they did graduate from. Uh, and get their medical degree from a recognized medical school. And they are here for professional development and training program. And they entered the United States lawfully. Uh, the credentials are verified. And then they are given a 90-day license to work under strict supervision uh, as they are here for training purposes uh, in the United States. Members, you've heard an explanation. We have a question from Representative Stewart. You recognize her? Thank you, uh, Mr. Sponsor. What what prompts this? We've had our medical system has a very precise, as you know, since you went through it, mechanism for training doctors and putting them in the field. What is prompting this proposal? You recognize, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, United States is a leader in providing education because of the top quality of our science and medicine. And we do, uh, Vanderbilt and other institutions, training institutions, do get these physicians who are here. Uh, a question came up that how much can they, they are working under supervision, how much can they do? And this uh, came up legally, is it okay for them to be able to ex physically examine a patient? Uh, and then it was the will of the Board of Medical Examiners that they would need authority to be able to issue Again, short-term, 90-day licenses after the qualifications have been verified. Follow-up, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So it says that uh, evidence is required of a host institutional ed or educational commission. Is this intent just to facilitate these visitors to our medical training institutions? Because what I, I would not want to happen is for... Uh, people providing medical services in the state to simply start bringing in uh, uh, foreign doctors for 90 day stints to save money for financial reasons. I, I don't think we want to just open up our state to foreign trained doctors because typically our training is much more, or certainly our training is more rigorous than that provided in many countries. What do you, how's this going to work practically? You recognize, sir? Certainly, those bases are covered in the bill. Uh, the, they are not allowed to apply for regular residency training. And uh, they work, again, under supervision in a, in a recognized uh, teaching institute. Okay. It's not that I can, in my private practice, bring in a fellow, work with me for 90 days. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Any further questions? Seeing none, we're voting on sending House Bill 2849 to finance ways and means. All in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Aye. Ayes have it. Bill moves out to finance ways and means. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Uh, item number four is going to be rolled to the heel of the calendar. Item number five, House Bill 2712 by Chairman Howell. We have a motion and a second, sir. And I'm showing your bill is traveling with an amendment, drafting code number 
15942. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. No action required in this committee since it's already on the bill. Uh, Mr. Sponsi, you are clear to recognize, or pardon me, explain your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this bill is the result of the Joint Refugee Study Committee that was appointed following last year's session. The committee was appointed by the Speaker of the House and the Speaker of the Senate. Uh, myself and uh, Senator Don White were the co-chairs of that committee. And as a result of those hearings, uh, this bill contains recommendations from the committee's report. Uh, it would put in place additional safeguards and reporting requirements for residential child care agencies. Um, those are agencies which place children in residential fa with families. They do not house um, children in a dormitory style setting. So this, uh, in conjunction with the Department of Children's Services, who is deferred on the bill, was drafted to um, make sure that we are looking after the welfare and safety of the children in Tennessee. And that's what the bill does. Be glad to take any questions. Members, you've heard an explanation that we have questions of the sponsor. Questions been called on the bill. No objection. We are voting on House Bill 2712 going to calendar and rules. All in favor indicate by saying aye. All opposed, nay. If you wish to be recorded as a no, the bill goes out. See the clerk there. And item number six on our calendar is also by Chairman Hal, House Bill 2711. We have a motion and a second. And Chairman Hal, I show your bill traveling with a minute, uh, uh, an amendment to uh, drafting code 15436. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. Um, also, I show that we have an amendment you wish to add. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. Uh, it, code, I believe, is 16617. Is that what you have? That's what I have, and I understand you're not running House uh, the drafting code 16519. That is correct. This one supersedes that one. <clears throat> okay, this bill was this was untimely filed. You recognize, sir? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion that we consider the late filed amendment with the drafting code of 16617, sir. Uh, we have a motion and a second without objection. Amendment is added to the bill. Nope. I'm sorry. It's up for consideration. Thank you. Now we have to have a vote to add it to the bill. Do I have a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second to add drafting code amendment 16617 to House Bill 2711. All in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, no. The amendment is now on the bill. Mr. Sponsor, you are cleared to explain your bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And first of all, addressing the amendment, it's clarifying language to bring us in line with the uh, federal standards. And what it does is just clarifies who will do the fingerprinting, the background checks for those agencies uh, who will be applying for a license to uh, look after these children uh, in the uh, what we call the NCCA or the non-traditional child care agencies. Uh, this bill is not a part of the committee report, but it was drafted uh, as a result of Senator White and myself collaborating with DCS in order to address um, sort of an anomaly that happened in Tennessee uh, last summer. You may remember all the reports of unaccompanied alien children coming into Tennessee, and uh, they were licensed by DCS, but this was a different type of uh, child care agency. They were dormitory-style uh, agencies, something that we have not seen in Tennessee, to my knowledge. And um, there, um, there were several hearings that we had brought to light a shocking lack of transparency on the part of the federal government. I would add there is still a shocking lack of transparency on the part of the federal government concerning the UCCAs. Uh, in response, this legislation creates a new category of child care agency called, and working with legal, I might add, called the non-traditional child care agency. The other one was the RCCA. This is the NCCA that houses them in dormitories. Uh, this uh, new NCCA will be specific in addressing those agencies, such as the one involved in the issues in Chattanooga that provide on-site housing. Uh, these children are not subject to the compacts, the interstate compacts, because they are under the jurisdiction of the federal government, not the state. And as a result, the feds do not and have not shared any info about the status of these children uh, with the state of Tennessee. Uh, federal law agrees with state law 
that the states are responsible for the welfare and safety of minor children within its borders, and this bill seeks to address the safety and concerns that DCS and the committee has for these young people. And they are young people. They are, I think the average age was uh, 12 to 17 with the children. that We call them children, but they were young adults coming into Chattanooga. So this, uh, this bill would then uh, create a new category, the NCCAs. The state of Tennessee will be able to uh, better ensure the safety of the children. It contains reporting requirements to ensure the DCS knows who is being brought into the state. A database will help ensure safeguards against child abuse by establishing a known record of the children served and the number of children served. It limits the number of children that can be housed in a dormitory style facility to 25. The one in Chattanooga was licensed for, for, for 100, which uh, experience has shown that that was way too many. And there is an ongoing investigation, I might add, which I won't comment on here. Uh, it creates a cause of action against a NCCA for a child, a cause of action for a child who may have been subject to abuse at a facility such as the one in Chattanooga. And I believe these safeguards are reasonable and they'll help Tennessee to protect the children who find themselves in these situations in the future. And with that, I would uh, urge passage. Thank you. I have two members on my list. Uh, uh, Representative Warner, you recognized? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you, Chairman Howe. Uh, any idea how many of these children we have in the state of Tennessee? You recognize, Mr. Sponsor? <laughs> I wish I could answer that question, but because of the lack of transparency on the part of the federal government, we we could only guess. There were several hundred that came in during this time period in the spring of last year. Uh, where they are and where they went to at this point, we do not know. And that's why we're bringing this bill to try to help Tennessee get a handle on the welfare and safety of these children. Follow up, sir. Well, well thank you for that, sir. And it's just, uh, I just, it really bothers me that, that we don't, you know, the federal government hadn't done a better job of, of, of taking care of these children. Thank you. Re Representative Stewart, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there an equivalent law uh, currently on the books in any other state? Mr. Sponsor? Uh, well, quite honestly, I, because of our situation, I wasn't really concerned about what other states had done. I'm concerned about protecting the children in Tennessee. But I really don't know. Follow up, sir. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to go out of session and just pose that same question to legal and also understand the relationship between federal law and state law in this context. Without objection, we are out of session. Uh, and Ms. Robertson, you have heard the question. Would you like to respond, please? Katie Robertson, Office of Legal Services. I've not looked into other states and how they've addressed this issue. Has any, I mean, has our attorney general weighed in on this? Has anybody weighed in? I mean, typically the, the, the relationship between the federal government and the state government is pretty well established in most areas of law. I'm just wondering, is that something that, it's not an area of law I know anything about. Is what, What's the story here? Does federal law cover this already or does it give the states legal authority to do this? What What is the issue? Are we... What's the legal framework? Do you know? You recognize? Katie Robertson, Office of Legal Services. I'm unaware of any AG opinion as to this matter. Representative Stewart, I believe the issue uh, that you're talking about may be covered under a 1972 federal act, which was related to refugees, not uh, illegal aliens or migrants and, and i guess my question mr chairman i guess it's for legal is is has any i guess the answer is we don't know it would seem to me that the federal authority in this area would have been articulated by somebody i'm just trying to figure out if we if we have any clues to what that is because it seems odd to me and unusual for our state to be creating a new le regulatory framework in an area that's typically a federal government area. There are certainly many areas where we can't do that. Any other questions of legal? 
Seeing none, we're going back into session. We are back in session. You have a question for the sponsor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess my, my question is, um, you're saying that it's, this is going to make it safer for the kids. I mean, Tennessee was responsible for those those children, and certainly the state of Tennessee knew who they were. What I'm hearing from constituents is this really doesn't address of how the problem of how we keep pe children safer. Even in individual homes, kids can be abused. And so are you saw, saying that just because we're not going to do larger facilities, they're going to be safer? Mr. Sponsor, you recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We believe these safeguards are reasonable. We believe that they will help protect children who find themselves in these situations in the future. Uh, I believe experience has taught us that having 100 uh, young adults from 12 to 17 in one dormitory style facility with a lot enough adequate, not enough adequate staff to take care of them with subsequent criminal charges against uh, some of those staff. And I understand the investigation is ongoing. I believe this is a reasonable response in cooperation with DCS and the Department of Legal Services to address that, that situation. Follow up, Representative Johnson. Yes, just one follow up. Um, so you're, it was inadequate staff. So the problem wasn't the numbers per se, it was they didn't have staff for the number of folks there. Representative, pardon me, Mr. Sponsor. That, that is not for me to say. That is what I was, was told by someone in the Chattanooga area. I can't put that on the record and say that's a fact. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Do we have other questions of our sponsor? The question has been called. We're voting on House Bill 2711, going to finance ways and means. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed nay. No. no. Ayes have it. Bill moves out to finance ways and means. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And... Okay, the next item on the agenda is item number seven, House Bill 782 by me. I will pass the gavel to the vice chair. Vice Chair Reedy, you have the gavel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chair. Uh, Representative Littleton. Could I have a moment of uh, personal right now? Today is uh, Representative Cheryl's birthday, so I think we all should give him a big hand on his birthday. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I know and, I was out of order. And he has no better place to spend it than with us right now. Well, what better place could there be? <laughs> there you go. Uh, Chairman Reagan, you are recognized on House Bill 1782. Members, can I get a motion and a second on that? Mr. Chairman, I'm showing we need to add an amendment 16395. Would you like to do so at this time, sir? Yes, please. I move the amendment to add, be added to the bill. We have a motion and a second on the amendment. All in favor of adding Amendment number 16395 to House Bill 1782, signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. Amendment goes on. Chairman Reagan, you are recognized on the bill, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. <clears throat> this amendment extends the Consumer Advocate Division to 2024. It was added because a previous bill, which was addressing the Consumer Advocate Division, has been sent to summer study by the Senate and therefore is inoperative. And for that reason, uh, this is just extending them to a reasonable year. With that explanation, I stand ready to answer questions. Questions for the chairman on his bill. Seeing none, all in favor of moving House Bill 1782 out to calendar rules, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposition, nay. Bill moves out. Chairman Reagan, the meeting is, is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. And I see the sponsor of the item that we were going to take up is not yet here. Therefore, that will be rolled to the next calendar. Do we, we have any other... Uh, I'm sorry, let me, House Bill 2312 is rolled to the next calendar. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other business to come before our committee? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Non-debatable, we're adjourned.
I'm going to wait on you to sit down. You can sit here. <laughs> the, uh, did you know about the stadium deal? Huh? I'd like to call the Finance, Ways, and Means Appropriations Subcommittee uh, to order for March 28, uh, 2022. Uh, because members are coming and going to other committees and have other commitments, we're going to suspend with calling the roll. Uh, in a moment, we're going to go out of session. Uh, today, we're going to hear presentations from appropriation amendments, which are requested by the members. Uh, those that wish to present will be here. It is not a requirement this year that you do present your appropriation uh uh, amendments. However, we're going to ask the members, uh, because a plethora of you have a plethora of amendments, that you would keep your uh, comments at a minimum so we can try to get through everybody today. We have this uh, room for longer than we need, we hope, uh, but we'll get to you as soon as we can. Uh, because of the, the need to flow quickly, we're going to uh, limit uh, any outside testimony on any of the appropriations, the members will represent those interested parties in which they uh, represent. And we're going to request that you try to keep your presentation per amendment for less than two minutes. Uh, members, you can also look on the dashboard. There is a list of the appropriation amendments. My uh, staff to my right is going to be helping me keep up with where your page number is and your amendment number is. But there are some amendments out of the, the amendment packs out at the table, and we'll they are organized in alphabetical order instead of amendment order. So, uh, without any further ado, we're going to start uh, with Representative Cooper. You are recognized, Representative Cooper. Uh, she's her rep, uh, her amendment is on page two. Representative Cooper, you are recognized. My apologies. We're going to go out of session. Representative Cooper, you are recognized. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am on page two, of course. And House Bill 0103 is uh, an amendment for, from Abundant Earth Global Community Development Corporation. And uh, they need funding for facility repairs and programs. And they focus on reducing poverty, feeding the community, and increasing community engagement and education, such as tutoring and so forth. They also take care of the homeless. And right now they do need uh, repairs on the building so that we be part of the repairs and the programs. And we ask for your consideration and approval. That's uh, that was House Appropriation Amendment 103, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Are uh, you recognized? Amendment Appropriation 104. Okay, House number 0104 is uh, in reference to the Mel Malone Family Foundation. And this is to restore the Mel Malone historic home into a school, into a museum. Now, uh, the Tennessee Manual Label Un University School founded and built in Malone on Malone land to teach the newly freed slaves in the community and is now known as cemetery. Cool. Classes were originally held in the Ebenezer Primitive Baptist Church, which still holds services. The community school known as Cemetery Elementary was built and stayed in service until 1963. It is to be made into a museum highlighting the historical value of the community during and after the Civil War. Not only that, I'd like to just mention to you that the Mel uh, Malone Family Historic Foundation is a historical society with the Historical Preservation in Memphis, founded in 2019. And I'm proud to say that they did receive 
uh, in 2021, the Merit Award from the Tennessee Historical Commission, and they drastically need to uh, preserve that uh, history that they have there at the uh, Mel Malone land that they have uh, founded and put together for a museum. We'd like your consideration and approval on that. Uh, House Bill 0101, is that where we're? 105. Okay. House number 0105 is the Memphis Area Association of Governments, and it is to support and extend MAG programs and services to towns and communities in Shelby County, Lauderdale County, Tipton County, and Fayette Counties. That uh, This organization has done an excellent job in and helping it and to advertise and help the community development, economic development in these areas. And we'd like for you to accept uh, this uh, appropriation, please. It's, we call it MAG, Memphis Area Association of Government. A, and it's a form of request for supplemental funding for the purpose of extending out the services to the four counties that I mentioned. And the main focus is in this area is MAG uh, focus on uh, planning and economic development. It provides financial aid to seniors for emergency repair for homes, certification for first-time home buyers, national historic preservation, resignation status, uh, tourism, and public grant development. And the services, which uh, are just numerous, that they uh, the things that they do to help build these, uh, these uh, communities. Um, this funding uh, is very crucial, uh, Mr. Chair, currently due to the announcement of the Ford's Blue Oval Automotive Plant. And these counties are near that area, and we know what the Ford uh, Motor, Ford Oval, Blue Oval Automotive Plant will do for that area in the mega, mega, on the mega site. And so we're requesting uh, funding for at least 12 towns to secure planning consultants to assist and guide them through the planning process. So the comprehensive plan will enable local and appointed officials to liberate, deliberate and determine the best decisions for future growth in uh, these communities. And we ask for your consideration and approval of this also. Thank you, Representative Cooper. Uh, thank you for that. That's all the appropriation amendments I have for you. Is that correct? Well, I had three others listed on here. Oh, you do? I'm sorry. Uh -huh. And on my page, they're together, page two, that's 0101. Yes, ma'am, you're recognized. Oh, thank you. And this is a, a, a uh, an organization in Southwest Memphis Community Co Corporation, and it offers a healthy uh, temple, it, at the Healthy Temple Ministries, a provision for community health care programs and services like uh, COVID testing, high blood pressure, and diabetes, those kinds of services that we have and a referral for testing. So so we ask for your consideration for, that, for 0102. And then we have another one, two, one more. One more, yes, ma'am, you're recognized. 0100, this is in the Southwest area also, it's a high polluted area and it's Community Development Corporation uh, has a Memphis Eye Institute for mobile eye care for in that depressed area. It's a very depressed area. And they'll be, be offering testing and referrals for services for minor treatment uh, eye care for the community. And we ask for your consideration and uh, approval for that uh, service. Eyes are very, very Thank you, Representative Cooper. And thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Is that all of them for today? I think that's all. Yes, ma'am. That's what I have, too. All right. Uh, as you can see, members, the, the members are queued. You can look for my attention. I'll try to fill empty podium or empty seats as the members come in. So uh, next up, we have uh, Chairman Kumar on House Appropriations Amendment, page 5, number 98. Chairman Kumar, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Committee, the amendment number is 015835.
Okay, you are recognized. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members, this has to do with Highway 431 or State Route 65 that connects uh, Interstate 24 to uh, the city of Springfield. The way Robertson County is located immediately north of here, uh, I-65 and I-24 run on the periphery so that access from these highways to the inside of the community is very critical. This is really a lifeline for our community. It's 12 miles long, half, first half near the inside of the community from Springfield going towards highway uh, Interstate 24. The first half six miles have been uh, widened to four lanes. The other are only two lanes. So we are, don't get the benefit of having a four lane highway from the city of Springfield to Interstate 24 because only halfway we get install there or easier with easier access halfway for the first six miles, then it all uh, clogs down into two lanes. It is an incomplete project and we are asking for completion of this project. It's very critical to our community and our future development. The other thing, it's a original project in the sense that if we were to make access to Robertson County easier from Nashville, uh, not only will it facilitate my commute, but it will make it possible for people who live, in, who work in Nashville, but cannot afford to live here, they could access uh, more uh, affordable housing in the Robertson County area. So it's, it will relieve uh, regional congestion, and it's just uh, a very important project to our community, and we ask for funding. Thank you, Dr. Kumar, Chairman Kumar. I don't know ever what to call you, but... Uh... Dr. Chairman Kumar, thank you for uh, representing your community. Next on, on the list, we have Speaker Marsh. Speaker Marsh, you are recognized on page six, pages six and seven, beginning with House Appropriation uh, <clears throat> Number 91. You are recognized. Rick, uh, Representative Chairman Eldridge, you can come to the podium there. Thank Th you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be real quick. 91 is from the, it, helping the Associated Builders and Contractors of, of the uh, Construction Trades Academy for training of skilled trade professional. They've got one now that's really been successful. They're asking money for 950000 to enlarge and improve that. The Next House, one, you're recognized on House Appropriations Amendment 176. 177. 177. That's from the South Central Human Resources Agency, which is a 13-county agency in southern middle Tennessee to help them build a $1.5 million warehouse to store donated food and to hand it out to poor agencies all across the, the district. The next one is number 180. This is from Middle Tennessee State University. They're moving their flight academy operations to the Shelbyville, Tennessee airport. They've got a lot of money in the governor's budget. They're, they're needing about $5 million money up front to, for up, up front and operational costs for a very worthwhile project for them and Chevyville and Bedford County. The next one is number 179. It's the Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. Our friend Warren Wells is asking for 150000 for a new type soil for a variety of horse shows. They can't use the same dirt that the walking horses use it, so he's asking for another one. Number 178 is a community clinic of Chevyville. They're asking for $100,000 to help in their safety net foundation and funding for poor people in our area. Number 181 is for the Chevyville Rotary Club for a statue of the former Lieutenant Governor Jim Bomer, who is the uh, international president of Rotary for a year and helped eradicate polio, asking for $200,000 to build a park and a statue for Lieutenant Governor Bomar. And the last one is 176, the Tennessee Association of Building Foundations. They've got a training bus that's got truck drivers and uh, classroom personnel training in the, in the bus, 5.5 million that these training vehicles have helped put people to work all over our state. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Speaker Marsh. Appreciate it very much. Next on our list, um, uh, page seven, uh, Representative Ogles, you're up next actually on the list. 
Uh, Representative Ogles, you are recognized on House Appropriations Amendment number 138, page 7 on the list, page 7. Thank you, Chairman. Is that uh, 15695? Uh, this is, uh, we don't have the drafting codes. We have the uh, the list. This there. You have two budget appropriations. One's for every LEA, the other's for the TBI. Okay, thank you. Uh, th thank you, members, Chairman, members of the committee. The first one uh, is for $50 million. That's part of which I'm being told is part of the base of the new funding formula uh, for school safety uh, that's being created. Uh, I've been told it's in there. I just haven't seen any language to see and verify that it's, it's going to be in there. This would allocate $50 million and earmark that to school safety uh, when this um, this is finally passed out of here. Uh, school safety is not something I know a lot of you have worked on in the past. It's not something that has a booster club or a lot of parents that are lobbying and advocating for. And if this is part of the base, I would just like to see some documentation to verify that. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the next amendment is – uh, for $150 million, it's already part of the budget. Uh, right now it's a line item um, for criminal justice, violent crime intervention. This simply just earmarks $75 million uh, to your local law enforcement agencies, and another $75 million to uh, TBI, just specifying that uh, this money will be spent to organizations that are already in existence that fight violent crime and that have the resources and training to do such and uh, just put some guardrails on that. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members of the committee. Thank you, Representative Ogles. Uh, Representative Campbell, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like everyone in this room to please join me in, in giving a huge birthday applause to my friend and seatmate, Representative Paul Sherrill. It, yeah. Yes, yes. And as a birthday gift, uh, Representative Cheryl, we will fund any of yours uh, budget appropriations that are not uh, over a hundred dollars. So, anyways, uh, Representative Cheryl, uh, you are recognized. I, uh, Representative Cheryl's budget appropriation amendments are on page nine. You're recognized on the first, which I have is Warren County Rescue. Thank you, uh, Chairman and Committee. Uh, the first one on there is zero uh, zero three. Uh, which this is uh, repairing and maintenance on the dam, the bridge that connects White County from Warren County. Uh, they're wanting to make this into a walkway, and, and we're asking for $100,000 on this. Uh, number two, the zero, zero, number two, Warren County Rescue Squad, uh, which is $60,000, and they're asking for help with their, uh, the Warren County Rescue Squad is asking for help with their engines on their boats, which are wore out. And we definitely want to help these folks that uh, goes out and works for you and I to, to retrieve people that is maybe drowned or whatever. So we definitely want to help them uh, as much as we can. We appreciate the help. Uh, 0037 is the White County Rescue Squad, which uh, is asking for $23,000 which is for an ATV to go down in places like Scott's Guff and places where people has hiked and wherever it may be that it's got hurt and needing a uh, needing help getting people out instead of trying to carry them out. Hopefully this would help them, their vehicle that they have, and ask them for help in this. Uh, the next one is uh, 0036. Again, is the White County Sparta Rescue Squad that they have a vehicle that they use to go out and help people with involved in accidents or wrecks or people are lost, which is fifty-four thousand dollars. They're asking for help in this, and we would definitely uh, appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna go with the last one, which is uh, zero one nine one. Uh, excuse me, zero one six four which is um, we are asking for $14,592,000 through parks for none reoccurring for Virgin Falls State Park and a half million for reoccurring that we've been working on to try to see Virgin Falls become a state park. And uh, we know that it would be an economical boost for the area and uh, for different counties around White County, Cumberland, Putman, uh, DeKalb, Van Buren, and other counties, plus the state of Tennessee, where people come from all over the United States and different places to hike. So we would definitely 
ask that we could get help this become a state park. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Cheryl. Next on my list, uh, on page seven, Rep or Chairman Moon, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Smoky Mountain Heritage Center is located in Townsend, Tennessee, which is near the entrance of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park and to Cades Cove. If Cades Cove was a park by itself, it'd be the second most visited park in the country. The Heritage Center currently has 17 historic structures and enables us to educate the public about diverse people and the cultures who have lived, worked, and died in the Great Smoky Mountains over the centuries. These structures have been modified or made ADA accessible with wheel wheelchair ramps and other alterations. However, the pathway leading to and from each of these structures is composed of gravel. It'd be our desire with this appropriation to pave these and light these. It's a non-reoccurring appropriation of 175,000. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Moon. Next on the list, Leader Lambert, you're recognized. Uh, for the members, uh, Leader Lambus, Lambert's uh, gets the prize. Uh, for most budget amendments uh, as a member of the House this year. Uh, his budget appropriation amendments begin on page five. Uh, Leader Lambert, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just happened to talk to a whole lot of folks over the last few weeks that thought there were some improvements that could be made in the budget in, in areas that we invest in. So I understand. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for taking me up. I will be as brief as I possibly can while doing justice to these. I promise you I wouldn't take up too much of the committee's time today. Um, item number 49, budget amendment number 49, Mr. Chairman. Item number, uh, item, budget amendment number 49 is $5.5 .5 million for recurring increase in DCS, DCS salaries for their case managers. Uh, this is happening kind of all over Tennessee, but specifically in the county surrounding Davidson County, they've had such a difficulty getting uh, DCS case managers in Davidson County, they've had to get case managers from surrounding counties to come in. Um, it's just a very robust economy right now. That's a good thing, but we need to up the pay on that. Yes. Thank you, Leader Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, amendment number 51 is four positions in the expungement unit of the TBI. We have continued over the last several years to allow for additional um, expungement opportunities for Tennessee residents to be able to get their records clear, especially for first-time offenders, but we've expanded that significantly. We, however, have not expanded the number of people that are actually doing that work to ensure the records become clean. And so that's what this would do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, do you want me to stop in between each one or just roll down through them? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, item number 52 would be for two FFA positions at the state level. Uh, FFA over the years has grown in population of students to take advantage of that wonderful program, but unfortunately the state allocation for the number of individuals that are working with those students has gone down over the last 20 years. Item number 53, or Amendment 53, would be for 10 additional trooper positions. There are some additional trooper positions in the budget. Um, the more troopers we get out there, the safer our roads are, and it's just a good idea to have as many as we can get in the budget. On that same note, Amendment number 54 is $1.7 million in recurring dollars for project return. So many of these folks that are coming out of prison, they don't have the resources they need to get back up on their feet. Project Return does a fantastic job of making sure these folks do not come back into the criminal justice system. Again, on that, on that same vein, um, right now we are severely behind in the number of assistant district attorney positions. Item number 57 would provide for 32 new assistant district attorney positions throughout the state, roughly one per district. Um, that's about half of what they really need. So if you want to get a, a quality judicial system, you've got to have it staffed right with district attorneys and assistant public defenders. This is specifically for the assistant district attorneys. Item number 58 is $18.5 million one time for a UT Martin building that would be a real hub of activity for rural Tennessee. This was on the list for a couple of years with THEC. I, I don't know what happened this year that it fell off the list, um, but it is something that I think would be extremely helpful for us to fund, and it's one-time dollars. And so that would be for UT Martin, uh, one of UT's smaller campuses, but quite frankly, one of their most efficiently run, and, and they make a massive difference in rural Tennessee. Um, the Jason Foundation is item number 59 and 60. If you are not familiar with the Jason Foundation, please, please, please look that organization up. It is actually um, was, was founded and is run out of Sumner County, but it is a national organization 
that helps prevent and reduce the number of suicides in our teens. Um, just, I mean, critical the work that they do. I hope in the amended budget there will be $305,000 as the second installment of what we did last year of one of three years um, of an allocation to them. I don't know if that'll be in the amended budget or not, um, but that's why the 305,000 and item number 59, item 60 would be for a $1 million non-recurring allocation to the Jason's Foundation. Every single dollar we give to these folks is going to save somebody's life out there. It's guaranteed. Go look them up, go meet with them. Um, it, it's, it's a really rough world that these teenagers live in right now and, and young, you know, kind of older teens and young twenties coming out of this pandemic with the, the challenges that this next generation is facing. They need this uh, big time. Um, $2.2 million on item number 61 that comes directly from uh, our local folks. I heard Dr. Kumar up here talking about a much larger project in his district that is definitely needed. Um, this one is for an intersection that is very dangerous. It's local roads that intersect in with the state highway. I know we don't normally do it in this in this manner, but I'd like to highlight that that's definitely needed, uh, whether it comes in a budget allocation or out of the TDOT budget. Uh, that's one of those intersections that's just, we're, we're real worried, and my local mayor there is worried that somebody's going to wind up getting killed if we don't do something. Uh, the YMCA has their youth uh, youth ledge program. That hundred thousand dollars on item number sixty two would be to help them. And these are the next generation of leaders. And so it's just a really good program. It'd be great if we could uh, support them a little bit more. Item number sixty three is twenty five thousand dollars in non recurring dollars to the T Tennessee District Attorney General's Conference for two conferences that are national conferences that are coming into the state of Tennessee. That's to assist with some additional funds for that. Um, Item number 64 is a pretty exciting project in our district. As Nashville has grown, some of the smaller airports around Nashville have had an opportunity to grow as well. And this is the Music City Executive Airport. It'd be $1.9 million to continue to expand their resources there and their footprint so that you have less planes coming into Nashville, more planes coming into the, some of these surrounding airports. And Mr. Chairman, I promise I'm coming almost down to the end. I'm even going to skip a couple. Yes, sir. I've landed Landing a plane. Landing plane, Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I'll land it. Yes, sir. So uh, $60,000 on item number 65 for uh, this is for the Sumner County Mental Health Court. If you don't have one of these in your district, please talk to your local juvenile court judge about this. This is, again, for juveniles. I mean, this is these are folks that are coming into the juvenile court system that have mental health issues, severe ones many times. It's $60,000. It's a drop in the bucket in our in our now proposed potential $52.8 billion budget, um, what I anticipate it may be, this is $60,000. But it, it literally, this is another one of those that's going to intervene early in young folks' lives and be able to help them. Um, item number 92 is something that's been coming for a long time. This is $10 million in recurring funds for EMS services. Uh, this is one of the few medical services out there, they have no option of who they pick up and who they transport. They're going to transport everybody. Whether you've got insurance, you don't have insurance, whether they take insurance, whether you pay or don't pay, they're going to transport you. And thank God that they do. But they're losing money left and right. And so there's other bills out there to try to deal with this. Really what they need is just the funds to be able to take care of all of those unpaid for services that they're providing right now that, again, are saving lives. So that's $10 million recurring for EMS. I have two more, Mr. Chairman, that deal. It's item number 134 and 135, and it's $5 million non-recurring or recurring, whichever way this committee would like to go, for, for the health care safety net. This is something that, Mr. Chairman, you and I have, have really championed for years with several other folks. It's what makes a difference in folks' lives when they are either underinsured or uninsured. I mean, they, we can talk about the strength and weaknesses of expanding tent care or their programs, but these are the boots on the grounds folks and these and, and these are safety net programs that are providing the services that people need. So the more money we can put into that, the more people that get direct health care assistance, not just insurance, but actual health care. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to get credit for having skipped item 50, 55, and 56. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Thank you, Leader Lambert. That's uh, the joys of being in leadership. I completely get it. A lot of people in your office, but I appreciate you advocating for all of them. Next on our list Chairman. is uh, Chairman Reagan. Chairman Reagan, you are recognized on page eight. Page Thank eight. You. Chairman Re Reagan, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item number 47. This requests $75,000 for the city of Oliver Springs. They are uh, pursuing a project that has $150,000 price tag, and the city is going to match uh, the $75,000 to complete it. The money would be for equipment storage buildings and provides utility support to three counties. That is the counties of Anderson, Roanoke, pardon me, Roan and Morgan. Uh, this would improve the overall safety in the service areas. With that explanation, 
questions? Thank you, Chairman Reagan. Seeing no questions, thank you, Chairman Reagan, for coming today. Next on our list is Chairman Eldridge at the podium. You're recognized, uh, sir, on page three on, on the list. Chairman Eldridge, you are recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this request is for men of valor. It's in the amount of $750,000 non-recurring, and it's to be used for pre-release and post-release programs and services for prisoners and former inmates. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, for coming. I got <laughs> lost on my paperwork trying to get everybody spooled out, uh, ready to go. Do you Thank have any other budget appropriations? That one was it, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You, Chairman. Thank you very much. Representative Lafferty, you are recognized for the members. He's uh, His uh, are on page five. Page five. Representative Lafferty, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a road project that has been necessary since I was chasing my girlfriend out there 20 something years ago uh but it's only gotten worse since then what we've got here is a the road or the uh, dating the, <laughs> back to the road okay thanks uh, well, road. thank you it's a it's a, a traditional t style intersection where two people going into the t have stop signs the third party that is on the state road has a 45 mile an hour speed limit and no stop sign and you're kind of playing russian roulette if you're coming straight on hoping that they're going straight and not giving up their turn signal. And if you're making a right-hand turn, uh, you're always behind that one guy that needs to go left, and you can never get around him. And it's it's bad. Even during non-rush hour times, I have set up to 15 minutes simply trying to make a right-hand turn at this intersection. It, it's not, it, that, not rush hour. That's rush hour. It's amplified. Some of the other things to consider, this is – the work is going to be done by the county – the county's got a million dollars to put in their cells. Uh, we're asking for $2.3 million. Several years ago, the county extended uh, what looks like a natural extension of this road. It's not. They extended and widened, uh, widened's probably the better word, a county portion of a road to make it more feasible downstream from this intersection. The problem that they created by doing that is now truckers that are coming from Kentucky on Interstate 75 have realized they no longer have to go into downtown Knoxville to come out west. They can get off up in the north end of the county and come down this two-lane state highway, which also adds to the traffic at this particular intersection. But wait, there's more. I am the fastest growing district in Knox County. We have had several new neighborhoods over the last decade go in. We've got 400 new houses being built within about a half a mile of this intersection. I'm begging. We need help with this. Uh, with that, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you, uh, Representative Lafferty. Appreciate your time. Next on the list, Chairman Doggett. For the members on page three, Chairman Doggett, you are recognized. Thank and you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Uh, we're looking at item number 79. In September of 1813, the United States was in a war with Great Britain, and at the same time, there was a civil war between uh, factions of the Creek Indian Nation. There was an attack at Fort Mims down in North Alabama where – uh, soldiers and their families were massacred. Uh, General Jackson took a, a group of Tennessee soldiers in October of that year down to Lincoln County, Tennessee, to Camp Blunt, where they mustered and then eventually went on to defeat the Red Stick Creek Indians at Horseshoe Bend. Some of the members that were there in that uh, unit were uh, future Governor William Carroll, uh, General John Coffey, and as well as David Crockett. Uh, Camp Blunt hosts a number of events, groups, and living histories uh, each year, uh, school classes. What they're asking for is a $750,000 uh, non-reoccurring uh, appropriation to the city of Fayetteville to be used for improvements to the camp, including stormwater drainage restrooms and reconstruction of the Greer cabin. Thank you, Chairman Dahl. Sir? I have two more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're recognized on House Appropriations Amendment number 80. Thank you very much. Number 80, uh, a few years ago, the governor was gracious enough to put into his supplemental budget uh, some funds to help start a regional fire training facility down in Lawrenceburg, in Lawrence County. Uh, what the city of Lawrenceburg is asking for is $100,000 non-reoccurring so that they can complete this fire training facility and have it operational, fully operational for uh, 
many, many counties uh, in the area to, to utilize. Thank you, Chairman Doggett. You're recognized on your last House Appropriation number 81. Thank you very much. Number 81 uh, deals with the Hope Botanical Garden in Lawrence County, Leoma, Tennessee. Uh, what we're asking for is $15,000 to help uh, be used uh, in the garden and infrastructure development. This garden has been around for around six years. They do a lot of fundraising, but uh, it's a really neat thing that they've got going on there, a part of economic development, but they do need some restrooms and some other improvements to the infrastructure. And so that's why we're here asking for this. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you, Chairman Doggett. Uh, Speaker Johnson, if you want to grab a seat between Crawford and Manus, you can go ahead there. And uh, Chairman Hawk, if you want to sit there at Doggett, you can. And Representative Hicks, you can take the podium over here. And we'll try to get all of you. Next up on our list is Chairman Crawford, who's going to be representing his uh, himself and his district and also his neighbor's district, uh, uh, Chairman or Representative Halsey. You're recognized, Chairman Crawford. Thank you, Chairman. My budget appropriations is on page three, starting with 0021. This is for a uh, million dollars for Miracle Field. This is the second portion of that. We've already built one. And this is basically a baseball park for special needs children. And it's used tremendously in our area. People come from all other states to take part in that. And if you ever get the opportunity to uh, help assist in these games, it'll it'll change your life. It's really great. Thank you, Chairman. You're recognized on your next budget appropriation, number 23. Uh, I've got 22. First. Oh, I'm sorry. It was out of order. Yes, that, sir. That's okay. Uh, this one is for a million dollars for Second Harvest Food Bank of Tennessee. There's five different food banks from West Tennessee to Northeast Tennessee, and these would be split. The million dollars would be split and go to each one of the uh, – the built the op places that uh, distribute the food um, based on their population and based on the percentages. Item number three is zero zero two three, which is seven and a half million dollars for Bristol State Line Stadium. Uh, this is the gateway into Tennessee, coming out of Virginia and North Carolina. We're looking at uh, hopefully getting uh, some major league participants and. Uh, that's what this will be, a new stadium that's built downtown. That's my appropriations. Thank you, uh, Chairman Crawford. I also know that your tag teaming is uh, a big part of uh, wrestling culture in Upper East Tennessee. So it looks like you're doing, for those that don't know, uh, Chairman Hulse or Representative Hulse, some budget appropriation amendments are on page five. Page five, starting with 0093. This is for Lighthouse Christian School. It's a... Uh, private school that's in our area that does a lot of good work and has a pretty good uh, enrollment. And this is for $55,000 that would redo the gym floor. Thank you. Is there, item, go, yes, there's item, one other. Item number uh, 0094 is for the Senior Citizen Center. This would be split between the Senior Citizen Center for Kingsport and the downtown center, and then also the senior center, which is located in Lynn Garden, and that's for uh, some of 50,000 non reoccurring. Thank you, uh, Chairman Crawford. Thank you. Um, thank you, committee. Thank you. Uh, Representative Manis, you are next recognized on page six. Representative Manis, you are recognized on House Appropriation Amendment 71. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> if I might make my plea for either 0071 or 0124, they're kind of combined. One is for Zoo Knoxville and the other one is for, 0124 is for the consortium of the four zoos and the Tennessee Aquarium across the state. <clears throat> Thank you, you are recognized. All Tennessee zoos and aquarium consortium facilities experienced deep financial hardships as many other organizations did during COVID-19. Many of those organizations closed in March, 2020, just as the peak spring break uh, Set was set to begin. As attendance begins to normalize and tourists begin to travel, we hope that they can return to pre-pandemic attendance numbers. But I just want to go through, uh, I made this statement earlier, the consortium was organized in 2015 and it, it includes the five accredited nonprofit zoos and the Tennessee Zoo and Aquarium. That's Chattanooga Zoo, Zoo Knoxville, Memphis, and Nashville. Uh, in 2019, they generated $194 million in economic activity. 
Uh, they entertain 1.5 million guests or tourists. They generate 817 jobs and uh, welcoming more than 3.5 million visitors annually. Uh, these funds that I'm pleading for today further support the education and conservation work that the consortium is passionate about while also providing more revenue for the state's other worthy initiatives. I hope you will look favorably upon uh, either 0071 or 0124. Thank, Thank you. you, Representative Manis. Uh, for the members, uh, House Appropriation Amendment 124, which you recognized earlier, was also in regards to zoos and aquarium uh, by Representative or Chairman Zachary as well. So appreciate that. Uh, next on our list, number one in our hearts from the four, uh, Representative Whitson, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I feel like I'm talking to the Bailey Building and Loan here, and you're Georgia Bailey. <laughs> Much nicer. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have five. Uh, uh, first, if it's a refuge center for counseling, a $20,000 request. The refuge center serves 17 counties in Middle Tennessee with that's excellent, affordable, and assess accessible mental and emotional health care services and the support of uh, their local communities. That is number 0010. Thank you. Uh, Representative, you're recognized on your house uh, on your next appropriation amendment. Yes, sir. That's 0039. That's for High Hopes. It's a $50,000 ask. High Hopes uh, uh, stands in the gap of the most vulnerable of our uh, population, predominantly children with special needs in 22 counties in Middle Tennessee through an inclusive school and pediatric uh, therapy clinic. Thank you. Next on I have on your list is House Appropriation number 8. Yes, sir. That's for the PAY uh, program. Uh, that stands for providing access to visually uh, to the visual environment, works with local educational agencies and the Tennessee School for the Blind to meet the visual needs of patients ages 3 through 21 who have low vision. For more than 20 years, the project has provided young patients with low vision access to optical devices and training. Thank you, Representative. Next on your list, House Appropriation Amendment 25? Yes, sir. That's for the Adventure Science Center here in Nashville. It's a one-time 500000 budget amendment request to the center to help fund a new STEM-focused state-of-the-art gallery entitled Health, Sports, and Human Performance. This 9,500-square-foot uh, facility will exhibit uh, those items dealing with human performance through the lenses of healthcare, sports, and technology, three key industries that have deep roots in Tennessee and that drive our economy forward. Thank, thank you, Representative Whitson. That's all I have for you. Does that conclude, or do you have another? Uh, yes, sir. I do have uh, another one on the list here. Uh, I have uh, number 0024. Uh, that is appropriation for the Tennessee Alliance of Boys and Girls Club. It's a statewide application. Uh, this amendment is for $350,000 for supplies and technology to address the COVID learning loss in boys and girls clubs across the state. They serve 53,000 children each year. Thank you, Representative Whitson. Yes, sir. You're yes, sir. And if we could go back to page one, I'm carrying this for Representative Beck. Um, it's 0018. It's a $700,000 request. And this is for the uh, Senior Citizens 54 organization. Funds appropriated will be uh, used uh, among seven lifelong learning centers in three, or excuse me, in two counties for the purpose of providing programs and services to older adults, helping to access resources, combat as isolation and improve quality of life. And sir, that's all I have today. Thank you. Thank you for doing that for Representative Beck. Next on our list, uh, Speaker Johnson, you are recognized on page number five. Speaker Johnson, you're recognized. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, House Bill 0067, you can take that off your list. Okay. Uh, House you get a blue ribbon for being the first to do that today. Speaker, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 0068. Uh, last year, we approved uh, $750 for the the implementation of a new program at Austin P, the Institute for National Security and Military Studies. It was supposed to be three years, and the governor failed to put it put it in his budget. I've been assured it's going to be in the supplemental, but this is just a backup. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, House Bill 0066 is $10 million for the Fort Campbell Historical Foundation 
for the Tennessee Wings of Liberty Museum at, uh, in Montgomery County. Next uh, and finally, I think Center Stone. Uh, that's correct, House. Mr. Chairman. House, uh, House Bill 0193 is for Center Stone Military Services, and it's for professional behavioral health services for military veterans, reservists, members of the National Guard, and their families. 800,000. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. Appreciate it very much. Next on our list, page number nine and 10, uh, Chairman White. Uh, you were recognized. Well, one moment, please. Uh, Representative Littleton, if you'll take that chair right there, you'll be good. Uh, Chairman Ramsey, I'm sorry, Chairman Littleton as well. That should get all the members that are in here at a desk. So after we get through these, we'll go to the members of the committee so they can be prepared as well. Chairman White, you're recognized. Members his you. are on page 9 and 10. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. And very briefly, uh, I submitted 10, but let me just point out four for uh, consideration of your time and the total budget. Uh, mine is page 8, but it's 171, Agape Child and Family Services, 171. Uh, this request of $500,000. Agape has been around for a long time in our state, and this is for their po poverty reduction programs. They're doing great, great work in that area. Then look at item number 170, Memphis Dental Society. We actually had this approved two years ago, then COVID took the budget away and, and we lost it. But uh, this is a, actually they're doing that this weekend. They have about two, they serve about 2,000 in, indigent people uh, in dental care. It's like a triage and like a military base. It's a phenomenal program. Request is 250,000 for that. Uh, let me jump down to Teach for America. As you know, we have a teacher shortage and Teach for America has been doing a great job for many years, recruit and train highly effective new teachers. They're asking for 2.5 million. That is House Appropriation uh, 169, Amendment 169. You're recognized, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, 169. The last one, 192, the Tennessee School for the Deaf. They have a deaf mentor parent advisor program. They're asking for a grant of 300,000 uh, for that particular program. With that, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Chairman White. Next on our list, uh, Chairman or Representative Hicks, page five from the podium. Chairman Hicks. Thank you, Representative Mr. Hicks. I, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. First Amendment is 0078. It's an ask for $10,000 to the Appalachian Resource Conversation at cons Conservation. Yeah, there we go. Conservation and Development Council. Uh, it is a 28-year-old 501c3 that serves Northeast Tennessee through programs such as supports uh, agriculture and conservation. Thank you, Representative. I think I have t t a couple more, three yeah. more for you. Uh, House Amendment 76. 76 is a, thank you, Mr. Chairman, a $2 million ask. Uh, this amendment is a request for to expand the statewide program we started in 2016 in our recovery courts. This budget amendment would ask for $2 million additional non-reoccurring dollars to pay for the use of Vivitrol in our state's drug courts and jails. Vivitrol is used for patients addicted to opioids or alcohol and is an aid in treatment process without using opioids to treat the addiction. Uh, the Thank drug you. Thank you, Representative. Yep. I will say before you move on, very passionate. You're very passionate about this topic. I appreciate you coming and, and communicating on this. It's very important uh, to what's going on as it relates to substance abuse in our state. You're recognized on your next House Appropriation Amendment number 77. Number 77 is uh, $25,000. It is for LXI. It is to be used for a food program, renovations, and to build a basketball court. LXI is a nonprofit that has been in Johnson City for a number of years. Uh, it works. They work with inner city kids, and they work very closely with our school systems. Uh, they serve about 60 to 80 inner city kids on a weekly basis and about 15 to 20 on a daily basis. They do very good work, and I'm excited about this amendment. It's the first one they've ever had. Thank you, Representative. And finally, House Appropriation Amendment number 75. Uh, 75 is for the Boys Girls Club of Johnson Boys and Girls Club of Johnson City. Uh, funds will be used to provide supplies and labor for improvements to increase the outcome for kids. Also, addressing the social and emotional wellness 
needed for the kids right now through COVID. Thank you, Representative Hicks. Thank you. Is that it? I that's think that's it. all I've got on your list. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee. Thank you, Representative Hicks. Next on my list, Chairman Littleton. Chairman Littleton, you're recognized on page members. Uh, her appropriation amendments are on page six, um, starting with uh, House Amendment 185. Is that correct? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. um, and I think everyone knows what the Children's Advocacy Centers of Tennessee are. They are the ones that do the forensic training uh, for the sexually and abused children. I'm going to make it short and sweet. Well, that's not sweet, but I'm going to make this short and sweet like me. But everyone knows what they do and what they're for. And we're asking for $500 million. $500 million? Million for okay. child advocacy centers across Tennessee. And like I said, we all know what they do. They're for our abused and sexually abused children, uh, for um, forensic training, men mental health initiatives, and victim advocates. I could go on, but we all know what they do. Thank you, Chairman. You have one other, Chairman House Appropriation Member 184. Uh, this is for the Jobs for Tennessee graduates. Uh, these are seniors that are in... Um, at risk of not graduating. So this program, we're trying to put it in all the all the counties across the state to uh, help these children graduate from school and decide if they want to go on to a job or if they want to go on to college. And that would be two million. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Lady Littleton. Uh, just to clarify on your previous budget appropriation, what was the amount you were requesting there? Five, on the which one? Uh, House Appropriation Amendment Number One Eighty Five for the Children Advocacy Center. Five hundred million. Okay, thank you. It's a one-time, non-reoccurring. We'd like for it to be reoccurring, though. Yes, yes, ma'am. So would every other member of this committee exactly. and this body. I but, should get credit for being short and sweet, right? Yes, ma'am. You do. Thank you, Chair Lady Littleton. Uh, next on our list, Chairman Hawk. Chairman Hawk's uh, budget appropriation amendments are on page four for the members. Page four. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, much like my. Mentor Charles Sargent, I'm asking for a budget amendment that is statewide in implication. Uh, $600,000 for our Science Alliance museums that serve our children, uh, preventing, uh, presenting STEM education, Chattanooga, Tri Cities, Nashville, Rutherford County, Memphis, and Knoxville. Our Science Alliance museums have had a challenging time during COVID as they had to close their doors, but now they're reopened and wanting to engage even more so with the students that they serve. So, certainly. Look forward to a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Chairman Hawk. Let the committee reflect that he did uh, uh, reference uh, the former chairman of finance's name and it being a statewide application in his presentation. So kudos to you. I don't have any other budget appropriations for you at all, Chairman Hawk. That's all I wanted to ask for. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Hawk. Next on list, Chairman Ramsey, you're recognized members. His are on House or House Appropriation Amendments are on page eight. Uh, while the members go there, Chairman Ramsey, you're recognized. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and we'll start with uh, item 200. Uh, this is a um, uh, request for $34 million, which would go to the TEN care to be used exclusively for nursing facility staffing costs. The funds would only be used for increasing the number of staff, increasing staff wages or bonuses, and uh, offsets the exorbitant costs that we've faced over the pandemic for temporary staffing agency charges. The, the wages for health care staff, housekeeping, maintenance, and nearly all the other positions have increased sharply over the last year. Most nursing facilities can't raise prices as they are nearly completely dependent on Medicare and Medicaid contracts, which, which can't be altered. There's been considerable help from both the state and federal government to offset those costs. But uh, as we all know, uh, the pre-pandemic levels of expense are never going to come back. Uh, they're never going to go down to what they were before. Uh, item uh, 199 is uh, in reference to Big Brothers and Big Sisters monitoring programs. Uh, a couple of key points are that if the children of an incarcerated parents are not mentored, most of them end up in the judicial system themselves if they are mentored through big sisters and big brothers, most of them end up graduating from college and becoming very positive tax productive citizens. PBS now also focuses strongly on families dealing with opioid addictions and all ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. 
They collaborate with agencies for mental health screens in schools and work with children. The, uh, the figure on this is uh, uh, $500,000. Um, it's non-recurring for Big Brothers and Big Sisters uh, Alliance. Uh, it's the same amount that the, um, uh, as you consider funding, and uh, how much may be available is an important factor to keep in mind in this instance is that uh, though the actual cost to Big Brothers and Big Sisters for mentoring is much higher, they have committed to adding a mentored child to their uh, program and coalition for every $1,000 they receive in funding so that assessing the impact of, of what this is going to mean to families and children is uh, easily assessed. Uh, item eight is for children's hospital budget amendment, uh, $500,000. Uh, ten Tennessee children are already experiencing an alarming, alarming strike, uh, a spike, pardon me, in health issues uh, before COVID hit. And, and now the numbers of kids going to hospitals is climbing in, uh, exorbitantly. Uh, the CEO at uh, Nyswanger Children's Hospital in Upper East Tennessee uh, says that uh, encounters for that hospital went up 61% last year. And our children's hospitals are set up to deal with mental issues for children, not behavioral issues. Regrettably, there is no place in the state for many of these children to go. And hospitals uh, report having to board these children for considerable, per considerable periods of time. Uh, the uh, many of the children must stay because they are suicidal, uh, some are homicidal, and some are both. Uh, children's host the uh, the age of these children is getting lower each year, and many of them now are around 11 to 12 years old instead of the teenagers they were used to in the past. Uh, the uh, it's not uncommon now for four and five year olds to come in expressing suicidal or homicidal intentions. Uh, I respectfully request that you grant $500,000 to the hospitals who are members of the Children's Hospital Alliance of Tennessee. That's East Tennessee Children's Hospital, Erlanger, Nyswanger, Vanderbilt, and Le Bonner. Uh, though the uh, amendment uh, mentions the Department of Mental Health by name, many agencies will be involved. And so many agencies are integral to the dealing and, and uh, uh, community mental health centers and other organizations will benefit as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Ramsey. Uh, very uh, passionate about uh, mental health. Uh, the Children's Hospital Alliance of Tennessee is doing a fantastic job. I had an opportunity to speak on the phone with them last week, of which uh, out of three of the f uh, of the hospitals, they had more than sixty kids there um, that are that were in their hospitals for mental health uh, episodes. And so I look forward to seeing where we can invest some money to try to offset the mental health uh, challenges associated with our youth today. I think it's something that we absolutely need to do. I've uh, been talking to um, the commissioner, uh, mental health and education about the uh, $250 million trust fund that we set aside last year and how we can fold uh, Children's Hospital Alliance of Tennessee into the discussion as it relates to how we deploy those resources. And so I appreciate your advocacy. Uh, the numbers surrounding our youth in Tennessee and across America today as it relates to mental health are are staggering. And so I appreciate your work there. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Much appreciated, sir. Mm -hmm. Next on our list, uh, Chairman Powers, you were recognized. Uh, your budget appropriation amendments are on page eight. Chairman Powers, uh, you were recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee. Um, my first one uh, would be number 89, and that's uh, being raised to the Campbell County Lions Club. And it's $300,000 to use to construct and establish a careful, they call it an inclusive playground for children with disabilities. It's a one-time uh, uh, money and it's uh, to match money that's all been, already been raised and pledged. And we, we do not have a, a type of inclusive playground like that for children with disabilities within a 30 mile radius. And uh, we have about a 20% 20 po uh, poverty rate. And out of those 20%, they have about 20% of the children that in those families that have a disability. So it would be used to uh, one-time money to build a playground for them. 
Uh, the other one was for $50,000 for the Campbell County Children's Center. Uh, the Children's Center uh, provides services to sexually and physically abused children and their non-offending caregivers in Campbell, Claiborne, and Union County. Uh, these services include mental health counseling, forensic inter interviews, sexual assault exams, victim advocacy, court advocacy, prevention education, and case management services at no cost to the client. It's a great program, and it goes back to what uh, Chairman Littleton was talking about a little, a little while ago, and this, this is money that would really be raised to help them, and they don't have any uh, regular money on an incoming basis. We, we have fundraisers for them all the time, so I appreciate it. Thank you, Chairman Bowers, for being here today. Uh, next on our list is Leader Camper. If you were recognized, the members, her uh, budget appropriation amendments are divided between page one and page two. Chairman Camper, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have several uh, amendments. All I think are equally important and are designed to help move our state forward, focusing on youth in particular, uh, dealing with workforce development, training and educating and preparing a workforce for the future. The first one, Mr. Chairman, item 146, is an opportunity to support the Memphis Juneteenth Festival, which is provides opportunities for entrepreneurs and business owners to market their goods. They have a 5K run. They have an op they have a component in there where they use youth volunteers to help plan it, to help run it, so that they're getting the training that they need to put on a festival, as well as all of the uh, coordination that goes on with that. They, we are asking for 20,000 on that. It's, it's, 20, it's in its 29th year, and uh, about 40,000 people come through that on a, uh, on a three-day weekend basis. The next one, Mr. Chairman, is item 147. And in the past, we have supported On Location Memphis, which also works in the entertainment, TV, film industry to educate and teach people how to leverage their talent and create a revenue stream for themselves. So we appropriated a few years back uh, 50000 We have the results of the great work they've done. They've helped a lot of independent artists to uh, uh, use their music skills and talents to create a database of uh, music that is then marketed to the in the festival. And when the uh, artist, if that film wins, then that artist wins. And the artists also get exposure to other films. So the mood music is marketed and they are able to, as an independent artist, to get residual income from their work. And we're asking for 30000 on that. Uh, the next one, Mr. Chairman, is um, an appropriation to the Department of Health uh, for grant making to Regional One Health. We know how important Regional One is to the Mid-South. We need to replace and upgrade our telecommunications and the healthcare system that supports all of West Tennessee. We need $1.6 million. Regional One's health current telecommunication system is outdated, it's not supported, and it's unstable. Currently, the system is actually projected to crash at any moment in time that could really jeopardize our entire West Tennessee healthcare system. If that happens, they won't be able to make phone calls, won't be able to receive phone calls. The hub for communicating with ambulances, flights coming in, transportation um, will be crippled. So it's important that we get the funds we need to really replace this outdated system, to be honest with you. This is what a system upgrade will do. 
enable patients to schedule appointments from telemedicine or even walk-in visits. Patients in rural West Tennessee areas with limited network access can continue to conduct telemedicine via telephone. West Tennessee physicians who rely on consulting with trauma physicians, burn and high risk obstruct, obstruct, obstruction, can't get obstetricians. Obstetrics. Yes, the one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Physicians will be able to communicate on a regular basis. So there's a need for this, and we're asking for $1.6 million. Thank you, Leader. Next on your list? Uh, 148. Okay, you're reckoning. We are asking for $300,000 to the Greater Whitehaven Economic Redevelopment Corporation. Uh, you probably read in the news recently where they were able to give grants to small businesses in the area to help them uh, 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 with their business, promote their business, maybe reface it. Uh, so we ask for 300000 with that. You're right. Mr. Chairman and members, item 149. Man, this is an opportunity of a lifetime here. This is an appropriation that will go to help fund a state-of-the-art facility that teaches and educate our children and have fun while they're doing it. I think we need to think differently about how we reach our kids. And this program is called the VOZone. And within the VOZone, vocational zone, man, the kids are learning. They're learning economics and finance, security, services, robotics, culinary arts, international diplomacy, broadcasting. And they're learning it at the facility where we'll have the schools rotate the kids in. But once they learn it, they take it back to their communities and teach other kids about everything they're learning. So I think it's a great way for us to revolutionize how we are educating, training our kids, and allowing them to have fun at the same time. Thank and you, Leader. Uh, Representative Shaw, you had a comment oh, on this. Thank you, sir. I did, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I had an opportunity. The program was presented to me the other day, and I just want to say it's, 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 it's new technology. It's putting lesson plans in a game. And that's been tried, and that works for a lot of kids who don't do very well by reading their books, but they can play games and get their lessons, Chairman. It's really a fantastic program, and I think we all ought to see that. It's something very special, and it's for work folks. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Shaw. Leader Camper, you're recognized. You're about, you're standing on second, headed home. Okay, I'm on second, headed home. Yeah, right. that means you're about halfway done. With, I uh, am. Your, your... I just get excited talking about that one. Yeah, you do. And it has a rich history. It yes. started out at the Croc Center, if you're familiar, in Memphis. Yeah. And um, well, we your time a... has ran out on that time one. The next ran one out. is uh, Mr. Chairman. House Appropriations Amendment 150, I think, is the next one. I think this has to do with having some residency before you can run for office. This one actually has to do with creative arts. <laughs> For veterans and service members and their families, we're asking for $2.2 million. The program is called Carpet Bag Theater. It's in Knoxville. Thank you. You're recognized on the next one. Thank House you, House Appropriation Chairman. 142. Uh, this one deals with autism. It's um, Advocates for Autism. It's an organization for autism awareness and services statewide. Uh, I'll make two quick points. One, uh, currently they're providing uh, collegiate chapters in the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, Austin P, and University of Memphis. And this will go to help with the seed money to start a chapter at Tennessee State University. They're also planning a 5K run to raise funds and continue their autism work, advocacy work. Thank you, Leader Camper. Uh, the next... 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 145, I think. Item 145 is a million dollars. We're trying to help prepare businesses as we get ready for Blue Oval City and what that's going to bring to our state. There's some technical support, some um, opportunities to help get business prepared for the wonderful uh, opportunities created by Blue Oval City. Thank you, Leader. Uh, the next one, 144, NAMI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. NAMI is asking for 150,000 non-recurring uh, to be used to fund the police mental health collaborating collaboration planning guide. Thank you. And finally, uh, I think you have House Appropriation 143. Uh, this is uh, Film I Commission. I do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I'll try to be brief on this one, but I love what we're doing here. So. You know we we how our incentives used to work, and oftentimes the incentive dollars for these big productions they had to bring the people in that had the talent and skills. Once we changed how we incentivized, we have an opportunity now to where we can have apprentices to learn these skills so that they can be employed on these set. We need to create a pipeline here in the state of Tennessee to fully take advantage of all of the film uh, TV in, uh, incentives that we've created for them coming here, but we can develop the workforce and that's what this money will go to do. It'll fully fund 50 uh, apprenticeships. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, any other questions for Leader Camper? She has um, completed her work. Seeing none, we're going to go to Chairman Rudd, who's in the room, and then we're going to come to the members of the committee after that. Uh, where is Representative Grills, if you want to come on up and grab a seat. I'm sorry I didn't see you at the back. I know you've been here for a while, but you go ahead. Go ahead, Chairman Rudd. You're right there. Representative Grills, you can get right there. Chairman Rudd, you're recognized. Uh, for the you, members, um, his uh, appropriations are on page eight. Uh, number uh, 15. Uh, this is a um, item I've been to before and thanks everyone for their help before. This is for the city of Eagleville. That is a small city in my town, about 700. Their resources are limited. It's a rural farm area. They bought an old uh, bank or remodeled it and they are wanting to put the police department in the back and build a new fire department, which their current one is virtually dilapidated. And that 100000 would go to the Eagleville building of their fire and remodeling their police department. Okay, next uh, on the list, House Appropriation Amendment number 24. Chairman Rudd, you're recognized. I'm not, not 24, I'm sorry. 14. 14. 14. Uh, this is a uh, $20,000 request uh, for the sole purpose of Camp Wonder. This is to help uh, handicap uh, children and children with learning disabilities in high schools in Rudford County to expand that program from one high school to several other high schools to assist the local Board of Education in that. Uh, they also allow and admit uh, uh, graduates that are uh, trained, help train them to find work after their graduation as well. So that's what that 20,000 would go towards. Thank you, Chairman Rudd. Next and finally on my list, House Appropriation Amendment number 31. Yes, this is a $5,000 request I, uh, it's a small request, but the, um, as you'll notice, the, uh, this is for the city of Murfreesboro Senior Citizen Center. They, have, uh, they spend um, hundreds of thousands a year maintaining their centers, and this is the main center there. It needs a little bit of uh, repair work, and I told them I would try to get a little bit to help them so they could meet their budget goal of 5000 This would help with inside and outside maintenance and deferred um, maintenance on that building. Thank you, Chairman Rudd. Thank you for coming today. Next on our list, uh, Representative Grills for the members. Uh, Representative Grills amendments are on page four. Page four. Representative Grills, you are recognized. That would be 137, Mr. Chairman? 137, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That would be for the um, Northwest Tennessee Agriplex, kind of a state-of-the-art uh, facility that would uh, facilitate concerts, uh, sporting events, fairs, trade fairs, con anything you can think of in that part of the world. We have nothing that uh, several people can get together in the same room and have an event like that. So this is something that's been in the works for about 10 to 15 years. COVID kind of threw us a curveball, but we're trying to uh, get some support back behind it. I have uh, all the adjacent county mayors are on board with it. All the adjacent reps are on board with it. And they signed a letter 
and I believe they actually signed the amendment uh, that was at your office. But um, love to get as much support out of it as we could. Thank you, Representative. I think you have one other House yeah. Appropriation Amendment two zero two. Yes, sir. That was for the uh, Bogota Community Center. It's just a small community in my district that uh, they have this little community center. It's kind of the backbone of it, and it really uh, needs some repairs, uh, air conditioning, uh, bathrooms, uh, just some small things. Not asking for a lot of money, but a lot of money go a long way here. Thank you, Representative, for uh, presenting your two budget appropriation amendments. Uh, look forward to the committee considering them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You have a good day. Thank you. Uh, next on the list, uh, uh, Representative Campbell. Uh, I think you're going to, you have a couple of budget appropriation amendments. His are on page one. Uh, you may actually be presenting an appropriation amendment for another member, I think, but you can tell us what they are when you get here. House appropriation amendment, page one. You're recognized, Representative Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amendment code at 15212 would provide $50,000 for the sole purpose of making a grant and that amount to the Johnson County Rescue Squad and EMS to be used for equipment, supplies, compensation, and operational expenses. And another is code 15210. This is statewide application, borrowing those famous words, $4,750,000 to the Tennessee Emergency Medical Services Board. This would be for the sole purpose of making grants to each and every county EMS in the state of Tennessee in the amount of 50000 per county to be used for equipment, supplies, and operational expenses. What we have found is there are a number of counties in Tennessee where a sizable percentage of their patients cannot or do not pay a single penny for the emergency medical services treatment and or transport that they've received. This is causing major problems for our emergency medical service agencies. Some counties and cities do not fund them at all. And their reimbursement rates from Medicare, Medicaid, and the uh, and TennCare are not that great. So this is something I think we need to do that would be something that directly impacts people in every single county in the state. Moving forward, we have... Code 15468, this would be $20,000 for the purpose of the Paramount Foundation in Bristol, Tennessee, in conjunction with Representative Crawford to be used for community programs and services and deferred maintenance and administrative expenses. Also, we have Code 15514. This is $600,000 for the Doe Mountain Recreation Authority to be used for operating expenses. Doe Mountain Recreation Authority has a mountain of over 8,600 acres where people travel in and ride side-by-sides there. It's a great outdoor entertainment option at a very good value. DoeTN.com will tell you more about that. And lastly, the Johnson County Senior Center with 15679 is requesting $20,000 for the purpose of a classroom expansion at the Johnson County Senior Center, and they do a tremendous amount of work there with their current resources, and this would help them very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Representative Campbell. Um, Representative Sexton is next. Page eight on your list. Re Representative Sexton, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, the same thing that we'd asked for last year. We have a situation in Bean Station on, along Highway 11W that is causing a flooding of two subdivisions and we, we've we gotten TDOT ready to make the correction to that, but our utility district doesn't have the $145,000 without raising uh, the water rates to move the water lines that run along the easement on TDOT's property. So this, uh, we asked for this last year and we held off because that we thought the federal dollars would take care of it. However, the town uh, didn't have enough money to give the utility district to take care of the $145,000. So that's what we're asking for on this. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Sexton. Yours are on page nine. Representative Shaw, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, have two amendments. Amendment coded uh, 196 for the El Canaan Health Community, its program 
uh, where we are trying to save our heritage. We were one of the old Allen White high schools were, list, were located in Whiteville. They were located all across the state of Tennessee, in fact, but there was one in Whiteville that was built for the purpose of children of color being able to attend high school back in the day, and it, it burned down. And of course, we were able to save some of the memorabilia there. And uh, what we're doing is building a museum in the amount of uh, $2 million, and we are asking for just some seed money to help with that uh, of $125,000 to help with some things uh, in engineering and other things like that, reaching out to the community and churches and other organizations for help to rebuild that and to save that memorabilia for that high school that was burned down some years back. Uh, the second amendment I have is 195. It is for Lane College. It is, of course, for the Division of Student Affairs and co collaboration with the Division of the Academic Affairs in developing the Dragon Academy, which is a summer bridge program designed to assist students with the transition from high school to higher education. Of course, uh, this is HBCU, it's HBCU that is in my district, and they have this summer program for their children, and they're trying to help to get them out of high school into college and also get them into workforce, and uh, we're asking for an amount of $75,000 for that program, and thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Representative Shaw. Next on our list, same page, page nine. Um, Representative Sparks, you recognize. Yep. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members. Um, uh, Chairman, a few months ago, I, I heard, I believe it was you and some others talk about the importance of field trips to our youth. And basically, uh, the Sam Davis Home Moral Association, I'm asking for $10,000. I think I shared a story with this committee that I was the only kid in my class that did not have the money to go on the field trip back in the day. Uh, this means a lot to me. We were able to help them about eight years ago. For, with 10,000, so I'm asking for 10,000 again to invest in some of the capital maintenance of, of the old home. And it's a regional argument. It, it picks up Williamson County, Davidson County, Wilson, uh, Cannon, and, and Rutherford uh, for field trips and other educational opportunities for our youth. Thank you, Representative Sparks. You have one more, I think? Yes, Nourish Food Bank. We were able to help them about six years ago uh, with roughly $10,000. Their needs are up to help folks with the um, rising inflation. Uh, I was over at Save a Lot the other day, and I noticed uh, it used to be five for $19. Now it's five for $25. So there's growing inflation there, and the needs of the community seem to be growing. So I'm asking for $10,000 there, Chairman and, and committees. Thank you, Thank Representative you. Sparks. Finally, uh, Chairman Hicks, you are recognized for the members. Chairman Hicks are on page four uh, and five, split there. Chairman Hicks, uh, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I know I have several, and I know we only have several minutes left, so I'll try to be as brief as possible. I'll start with uh, amendment number 0107. And that would be for the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. And this would be for 17.9 million recurring for supplementing the provider rate funding pool. Uh, the original amount from mental health was about uh, mental health and substance abuse was about double this amount. The governor actually put half of this amount in. So this would actually make that original request whole. Uh, moving right along to amendment number 0108. This would be for the University of Tennessee Institute for uh, for public service, this would be for funding a statewide SMART initiative to the tune of $783,800. And again, that would also be recurring. Uh, moving along to Amendment 0109, this would be to the Department of Education. This would be for a statewide pilot project that provides permissive uh, access to local school districts to utilize STEM-focused 3D game-based learning, a 3D game-based learning platform. And just want to, ex let me expound a little bit on that one, if I may. Mm -hmm. I had this pulled up. So this would be for, just to get a little more detailed, Plasma Games. It's actually an interactive game that integrates Tennessee learning standards for high school chemistry and middle school science. Numerous other states have offered the game to their students and are seeing great improvements in student engagement. And this also increases in the end 
uh, of course, exam scores. So certainly a, a worthwhile initiative there, and that's to the tune of $2 million. Moving right along to uh, Amendment 110, this would be for the city of Kingsport, and this would be for non-recurring 810,000 expansion of the Kingsport Academic Village with the purchase of two additional facilities. Moving right along to Amendment 111, this would be for East Tennessee State University for the tune of recurring $2.9 million for providing tuition differential and operating funds for the Gatton College of Pharmacy, an issue that has been ongoing for quite a while, and so certainly look forward to uh, bringing this issue to the forefront again this year. Also, Amendment 112 moving right along to the University of Tennessee, and this would be to provide as assessor education, technical assistance through the County Technical Assistance Service are also what we know as CTAS. So this would be basically to help our assessor of properties um, to make sure they're up to speed. And if you look across our counties at the new assessor of properties that will be coming in uh, in the next couple of years, and, and we've lost several of our uh, assessors. It's, it's mm -hmm. amazing how many that we've actually lost due to illness. And, and so this would be a very timely uh, request here. Moving right, and again, that's for 200,000 recurring. Moving along to Amendment 113, this, this would be for Hawkins County Schools. This would establish and expand the career and technical education program, including construction of a new building. The county has uh, put up $2 million, as well as the Board of Education there in Hawkins County has put up another $2 million, and this would be to expand their CTE. This would be a really regional approach, and so this was located more in the eastern part of the county where really located in the Phipps Bend Industrial Park is where it's actually at, which is owned by uh, Kingsport and Hawkins County as well as TVA. So this would be a really worthwhile initiative to help to expand CTE uh, initiatives and, and offerings. Moving on to 114, Amendment 114, this would be for Hancock County. This would be for construction of a new park uh, with a walking trail and baseball field, and this would be to the tune of $1 million. If you really think about that and you think is what kind of park is this, this would be the park for Hancock County. Um, it's amazing that in our 95 counties, how that uh, we do not really have a park in Hancock County. We have one that's very small on the side of the road. And I'm just going to be honest with you, I think that's sad. And so I'm offering this and I hope that we can get those folks over there. They certainly deserve this. And not only them, but the, the children over there do as well. So certainly look forward to bringing forth this. And this is a $1 million ask non-recurring. And I'm almost finished. Moving along to 106, Amendment Number 106. This would be the Department of Health to establish and manage an educational dental safety net uh, care fund and pilot program that supports 33 counties in East Tennessee in partnership with Lincoln Memorial University. And this would be year one of three. This would be non-recurring 3.3 million is what's asked. If you look at the Department of Health's budget, they actually put monies in there for two of the three dental programs. One of those is the University of Tennessee and the other is Meharry. And somehow LMU didn't make it in there. And so this would just make sure that all three dental programs across the state would have an opportunity to be able to provide much needed services uh, there in, in Northeast Tennessee. Finishing up, uh, Amendment 115 would be for the uh, Human Resources Agencies. This would be a matching grant program uh, for uh, operational expenses as well as a grant program. This would be 30,000 each for our human resources agencies for the, to the tune of 270 million non-recurring. And I think that does conclude my asks. Thank you, Chairman Hicks. Uh, I see no other members uh, in the room. So the only ones left that haven't been discussed will be mine. I'll do that if members are in the hall and they hear me say in the uh, saying anything, we're fixing to say last call. Somebody can turn the lights down and back on in the back, but the, uh, for members to come in. Uh, but, uh, I have two budget appropriation amendments. They are identical. The only thing difference between those two, their house appropriations amendment 0004 and House Appropriations Amendment 0020. Uh, one is for recurring dollars. The other is for non-recurring dollars. The uh, previous governor and this governor have put money in in the past as it relates to Save the Children. This money uh, for the Save the Children Foundation goes to their after-school and in-home uh, literacy programs. As the members know, during COVID, there was a lot of challenges as it related to our, our, our children. These after-school programs, not just in schools, but uh, uh, utilized through evidence-based programs like Save the Children, 
are an integral role in getting our kids caught back up. And so would appreciate the members uh, and the governor's support as we look at uh, these budget appropriations. Uh, seeing no other members enter the room, I uh, want to appreciate the committee for their attentiveness today as we went through a plethora of these budget appropriation amendments. Uh, we're going to go back into session. Um, so that we're now back in session, members, uh, it is the it is anticipated that this committee may not have to meet again, uh, but we are going to adjourn at the call of the chair in case that we do have to come back as it relates to appropriation amendments. As you know, the governor's office is releasing tomorrow the appropriation amendment as it relates to the additional in, uh, initiatives that the governor's and the administration is putting forth. And so this committee and uh, uh, Chairman Hicks and Chairman Hazelwood, Chairman Baum, look forward to uh, going through the data over the next several days to find out what would be a good fit between the administration and the House uh, and Senate chambers. Uh, any members have any personal orders before we adjourn? Seeing none, House Appropriations Amendment uh, Appropriations Subcommittee is now adjourned at the call of the chair. Thank you.